Hi everyone, my name is Jacinta and I'm a geology consultant working for Dynamine in one of our Australian offices. Thanks for joining me. Today I'll be running through a standard workflow within Studio Mapper, including some of the late, latest features in the software. We've had some great additions to the software over the past few months and I'm excited to share what our team has been working on. So, what is Studio Mapper? Studio Mapper is a data mine product that has been designed for geological mapping on a tablet in the field. Set up with the same studio design, the interface has large icons for ease of use on a touchscreen device and with a stylus. A configuration file is set up for each site, which includes login codes and naming conventions, depending on your requirements. Studio Mapper allows you to use all of your mapping data, which would generally be on a paper map, exporting georeference data mine strings, drill holes, photos, PDF plots, and CSV drill hole files ready to be uploaded into a database, with the added advantage of having preloaded data on a portable device to help you make quick decisions whilst in the mine. So now I'm going to head through a standard underground face map in Studio Mapper. What you can see here is a display quite similar to the standard Studio interface. Up the top, we have simplified ribbons with larger icons for the use on a touchscreen device. And then on the side here, we've got a project data tab, which up the top has the reference to all of your maps in this database. And then down here, you've got your usual 3D map data. So here you can turn on and off those designs and drill holes or anything shown in your 3D window. So what I've got here in my 3D window are five face maps previously mapped. I've got a design wireframe and some drill holes loaded up. And what I'm going to do today in this video is just create this six map at the end of these faces. So to create a new map, you go up to new. From here, you get a pop-up box, which asks you for your map name, which would be pre-configured in your file. You've got the choice of what map you'd like to create. So today we'll do a full heading. And what you can see on the right hand side here is it checks on the types of areas in the heading that you'd like to map on. Next, there's width, height and depth. And I'll just keep that at a five by five by five and click OK. So what you see here is a little box representative of my heading. First thing I'm going to do is add in a photo. It's just in the pictures, go add, find my image. It's just this image one, click OK. And now we'll just move it so it fits into the face. So here we go. Next is adding a profile. So we have a list of some common profiles that we use. For example, this 555 arch just has that green border around the heading. Or what you can do is choose to create your own. So I'll just draw a few points around the screen. And now we've got our new profile. Next, I'm going to add in some features. So up the top here, we've got this features tab. I'm also going to turn on a grid just so we can see where we are. So this has one meter intervals, which is great for long wall maps. So I'm going to go add contact under this geology section here. And I'm going to make sure my auto node is turned on. So this has been designed for the use on a touchscreen device. So if I click and hold down, it will create points along where I'm dragging 
my mouse. So it's great for a stylus. So there's my contact up there. What I can also do is add in some more features. So with this outline, I'll use the auto node again and click and drag down anywhere in the face. And that will create a closed polygon like that. You can also add structures, so I'll just draw in a little bolt up here. And maybe I want a observation as well, so I could say at this point on the bolt, we've got a I don't know, 30 degree dip and azimuth. We've also got the option to add in sketches. Here and comments and also over in map properties you can add in mapped by, date mapped, distance stations. I've also got these evaluated map properties included in the newest version which can calculate the average gold by a string polygon area and also calculate the dominant lithology. Next is the channel sample. So first thing to do is to make sure your prefix is starting with your first sample. I'll just keep it at number one. Hit new channel. Just go first, starting here, last channel point there. And you can move this up and down. You can move these points back and forth. If you want to be more exact, you can also type in into this, these from two length boxes over here. Next, we've got the fields that are included on this drill hole. So this is where you would add in your logging. Uh, just change any of the uh, fields here. And this can be exported as a CSV with the from two length logging and the sample IDs for each sample. So it can go straight into a database. Also, there's QAQZ. This is quite a new feature. So if you click on your sample, go add standard here. Maybe you want to add a duplicate or a blank. There we go. So once you're happy with how everything looks on your map, what you can do is georeference it. So we'll just go georeference by two points and just snap to these points down here. Head to the 3D, make sure I'm snapping to the right thing, so a surface. Zoom in here and say I want that first point to be here and that second point here. So now all of the strings, drill hole and photos have a real world XYZ coordinate on them. If you are not happy with the position, you can always rotate or reset and start again. So what we're going to do next is export. So go map, export, choose your mine and your area. I'll get it split up in your database. And also what you'd like to export. Click the button, what you'll have. Just drag in the file is geology is just a data mine string so we've got all of our map names and the lithology that we mapped we've also got our channel samples so this will be from to length we've got our logging codes and if we did any QAQC in there as well and last but not least is our PDF plot. So I just click that, save my PDF. And what you can see here, just drag it on. We've got the vein we created, the fault, little location up here. We've also got our sample from to and logging code table down the bottom. So that will be set up to your site requirements as well. So what I'm gonna do now is 
update my wireframe using this, these strings that I've created on my maps. So I've got that basalt contact that I exported previously through these six faces. So over in Studio RM, I've got a design and the same drill holes that we saw before. And this time I'm showing my current wireframe. So if I go up to Vane and into my implicit modeling, which will be updated in the new Studio RM version 1.8 with a new methodology. So I'll go choose my column, which is my ore body. And it is number two. So it's highlighted the points. So now if I hide that, we've got the red points on the top and green on the base of the foot wall. So what I want to do is add in those geology strings. So strings, oh, just drag that in. and add them as hanging wall points. And you can see they've now highlighted in red along with the other hanging wall points. So you've also got the option to edit samples, so that's choosing if you want to use or reverse any samples. You've got boundary where you can create a perimeter or choose the distance from each sample. You can include a fault wireframe and also change the controls, so minimum thickness, maximum thickness. You can choose to generate a hanging wall surface and a foot wall surface, but today I'll create a combined closed wireframe and go compute new. So here's my new wireframe. You can see those points have now been incorporated in this new wireframe compared to the old one. So I'm just going to step through those six maps. Just choose section by two points, add in my clipping, Align my view and now I'll just turn on those three wireframes and just make it a bit clearer with the wireframe slice. So here we are. We've got our design for the drive. We've got our old wireframe in red. And here we've got our new wireframe that I just computed with those new strings incorporated into the wireframe. So if I now step through, phase two, phase three, here we even hit another drill hole in the same section. So you can see that wireframe honors each of those points. Again, in the last phase there. So thank you very much for joining me. I really appreciate your time. Please flick me an email if you have any further questions on Studio Mapper or implicit modeling. My email is up on screen now. See you next time.